Chapter 5! I defy anyone to remember anything that happened in this bland forgettable chapter other than the boss fight. Welcome to the last big world, and isn't it disappointing? We've had what, like 40 areas up to this point, and only the Yoshi Sphinx in the mansion stood out whatsoever? This is the worst, most bland iteration of the Mushroom Kingdom ever. Every other Mario adventure, no matter how minor, always gets some creative place or theme we haven't seen before. This was just grass, desert, forest, snow, and lava. It's even less themes than your average 2D Mario platformer. Usually those get eight worlds and at least one of them is something new like Peach's Castle in Lava. We start with 5-1, Shy Guy Jungle. Battle you! For a sticker? You wish. We go to the right and get eaten by a flower. It was this hazard that made me realize they don't heal you after a chapter boss. I'm sure this happens in other games too, but in 2012, really? I go back and heal and try again. Nice false start to what's supposed to be a fun adventure. Jump didn't work, so I guess hammer must be the answer. That's another thing that shows after playing long enough. This isn't like other games where you gain access to more powers as it goes on, or there's a large number of abilities that work together in different ways. We're almost at the end of this thing and still just jumping, hammering, and sticking stuff on stuff like we did back in chapter one, so all the puzzles feel the same. I guess they intended for the stickers to be the progression, but I say not good enough. Cause they make the game less fun to play and the battles aren't fun to make up for it, so it just all blends together. The hitbox in this flower is pretty weird too, so it took me a few tries to get it to work. That's one of the worst things that can happen to me when playing a game. Inconsistent when its mechanics respond to a button press. It's frustrating when you thought of the correct answer, tried it, maybe even tried it twice, but it doesn't work right, so you get stuck and assume the answer must be something else. Behold the sequel to Ice Bros, Spear Guys. They're everywhere, and again, they do impossible stunts to hit you almost no matter what you try. Oh my god, they're- <laughs> He hit me with the blunt side of it! <laughs> got sucked into that! Up ahead, there's three of these asses that hold the keys to unlocking the level exit. It's one of those. Our first spear guy is kind of clever. We have to chase him around and feed him to the carnivorous flower god. Behind the ledge near that flower, we can slip into the background and get the powder puff. This thing blocks all damage for three turns. It's real helpful for someone trying to trudge through this diarrhea. The second spear guy is hiding by the start and oh my god! We have our first incentive to participate in battles! Five chapters in and the spear guys don't despawn if we run away. Only in tall grass though. The one standing on normal ground still dematerialize at the sight of you doing nothing. What an honor. This means they had the capability of making enemies stay on the field after running, they just chose not to do it. Spear guys suck and are pretty easy to beat though. Even my normal stickers beat them in one hit and they seem to only attack alone. The guy with the key just gets cornered and dies. The third spear guys hideout contains one of my favorite things in any Nintendo game. Seriously. We have all these scraps of paper that say different things. There's all sorts of stuff in here. Anything from a toad throwing away the F his teacher gave him, to personal ads, to extended lyrics for Birdo's song, to lore on the paratrip as we met at Yoshi Sphinx, a help wanted ad to work on the production of Sniff It or Whiff It, a tabloid telling you Luigi must be hidden in this game, explanation for why the ancient Egyptians played baseball, some funny jokes, and the only time characters from Paper Mario on N64 and Thousand Year Door are ever treated as canon! There's a letter from Paracary and an essay written by Goombella at the University of Goom. But my favorite one is this. This is a coded message that no one knows the meaning of. It isn't known to do anything in this game. People have tried going beyond the game and punching it into various Nintendo eShops to no avail because it's the right length. No one's ever cracked the code. I just want to like, let that settle in. When are video game mysteries ever a mystery for any amount of time? Nowadays, people just hack the game and boom, everything about it's known instantly. The last time a mystery in a Mario game remained a mystery for 10 years, it was Luigi in Mario 64. This is awesome, and developers should do more of this stuff. Granted, I think video game design courses could learn a lot from Sticker Star, but I mean this one in a positive way. I would laugh if someone cracked this code one day and it was a developer talking to us through a cipher saying he knows the game's dog shit. It would still remain one of my favorite parts of the game if that was the case. 
Though, I get the feeling the mystery isn't all that exciting, and they just intended for this to be an activation key or an eShop code that someone threw in the garbage because it was already used. Since we see yesterday's newspapers, horoscopes, losing lottery tickets, and tons of other things that people just throw away that happen to be printed on paper. Also, I just noticed right now that I said my favorite part of Sticker Star was in a garbage dump. Oh, and the puzzle itself is horrible too, to match. I ran around this damn place for 31 minutes exactly, finding the wrong spear guy over and over until I got a walkthrough to help me. When running around here, it's the most mind-numbing, mindless game of hide-and-seek you can imagine. Just run around in a straight line, zigzagging every which way until you find the right spear guy. And guess what? The answer is to use a thing sticker they didn't tell you about. Of course, and I don't have it. How did you expect me to know this? I went in here and checked the paper, found a spear guy, found several of them in fact, which is what I was looking for, and I just thought, oh, these are the wrong ones. The right one's gotta be around here somewhere. I just gotta keep checking. There shouldn't have been decoy spear guys hiding among the trash if the real one wasn't there. It's a beginner's trap, fooling the player into thinking they're doing what the game wants when they aren't. I didn't think to paperize in this room for an age, much less do it in the right spot. That's also picky. Yes, yes, very scary. Now we can leave this place. World 5 makes an awful first impression. I'd call it the biggest drop off in quality from one level to the next so far. But it just feels numb to say that because this is like the third time we've hit a new low within the same consistently terrible game. I got like nine coins for that. Looking at my recording timer, this one level took me an hour and nine minutes to get through. Jungle Rapids, you go down a river. Instant game over if the raft is destroyed, otherwise forgettable. I didn't realize that I moved this raft by trying to walk off the edge of it at first. I figured it'd be weight based, but then that didn't work so I figured you couldn't control it and just had to hit the enemies with your hammer. Then I died and went, oh. <laughs> Pretty obvious and I just didn't figure it out. The death didn't even send me back that far. This level's all right and it's over quickly. I won't hold it against it. Long fall falls. Uh, oh. Wow, uh, it's the same level again, but in reverse. Just with a cheap chop after you this time. How would you even go down a river backwards anyway? I started out playing it legit and then I realized you can win this level by just pressing left once at the start and then doing nothing. Well, while we're sitting still and going down the same river again, I think we can pass the time with something I am intensely passionate about. This game's backtracking and repetition is horrible. It's a farce when people try to defend the modern trilogy by saying, well, Thousand Your Door has backtracking. The old games aren't that good compared to the new ones. Bro, have you even played Sticker Star? Like seriously, I wanna know, even partially, even slightly. I have played every game in this series and I would happily take running to Creepy Steeple one more time or doing that horrible search for General White that happens once per playthrough, by the way over this garbage. Any backtracking section in the old trilogy is infinitely more tolerable than the minute to minute gameplay of Sticker Star. This game is constantly wasting your time for no benefit, sending you back to the start of levels for not magically knowing which stickers you needed, arbitrarily hiding the solutions to puzzles in entire other worlds without even telling you where you need to backtrack, and even has an entire chapter themed around backtracking where you go through 12 levels and then replay seven of them. And you don't even get to replay the only good level in that chapter. And I'm not defending General White. Oh, I got annoyed at him as a kid. Sure I did. But it's like 20 minutes out of a 40 hour game. Is it really that big of a deal in the long run? Plus the rest of that chapter was ultra amazing and had some of the best gameplay, emotion, and music in the entire series. Then when I backtrack in older games, at least I'm picking up easy experience points along the way so there's potentially a benefit. Thousand Year Door's retreading at its worst isn't even in the same universe as Sticker Star's constant. I have no idea why Thousand Year Door became the poster boy for bad backtracking and not Sticker Star. Oh wait, it's cause no one finished Sticker Star and people actually wanted to play Thousand Year Door. Sticker Star is bar none the worst Paper Mario in terms of wasting the player's time and it isn't even remotely close. This should be the game everyone rags on for having backtracking and bad pacing out the ass. Plus, 
at least the old games balanced out their flaws because they had good stories, good characters, and were, you know, actually fun. I like games that are actually fun. Of course the old games were better than this. Fuck. We beat the level and the map just goes in a big circle. We have to press left a second time near the end of the level to find the true exit. Damn, I did two inputs and found a secret exit. That's gotta be some kind of record. Okay, so we have to paperize one, so it's more like five inputs, but still. This level might as well not exist. I would have voted to cut it or tack it onto the end of the last level. It doesn't deserve to be its own thing. Because I wanna help you, go off to the right in the final room for this thing. It's a win button against practically everything. You'll need it. Chomp Ruins. I didn't even remember this place or have opinions when I saw it again. I hope I develop some when I play it because wow, this world is trash. Huh, music's actually pretty good. It's your typical puzzly temple. Not a lot of battles here. After playing it again, I'd say it rounds out to being okay. Not spectacular or good or anything, but I'm up for anything that doesn't expect me to fight stuff. Oh look, a big chain chomp. Yeah, we got a boss fight at the end of this one. Time to bust out our best stickers and... They have no effect. I won the slot machine at the start, got to use three stickers, and they all did nothing. So I just reset a screw taking a laws on this. They gave us a save block for a reason. Even more of a dick move. The chain chomp is sitting still before the fight, and my first strike did do damage to it. First strikes don't normally ignore defense, so it's an oversight that fools the player into thinking they can damage it. This isn't a boss fight. It's do nothing for three turns until he wakes up and beats the level for you. Um, okay. Rugged Road. Wow, stuff's really heating up. We have a clear roadblock at the start prompting us to paper eyes. I'm gonna guess something cold. Thank the Lord. Knowing the nonsensical game design we've seen so far, I was half expecting that we'd cool this place off with a tube of foot ointment instead. Cool visual theming in this place. I liked how intense it felt starting off and then seeing hell freeze over. It's always just kind of a neat thing to see in a game. It goes back to just being a lava level after that. The start made me think that we were gonna get a freeze flame galaxy, which would have stood out more. It's fine, it looks good, I just thought it would have been more. I had no idea what to do with this part. Let's see what Kirsty has to offer. Oh, eye-opening! Lava is hot! Thanks for the hot tip! Love you, Kirsty. Really do. Our answer is to go back and use these blocks to go higher. Uh, no. That gives us a car sponge. Because of course! The answer was a whole foreground I didn't notice. Guess the joke's on me again. The puzzles lately have been pretty straightforward and not that bad. I think it's on me generally when I've messed up in this world, so they get a pass. The scrap immediately looked familiar and I knew where to take it based on its shape because the corresponding spot stood out. Four! Our goal going forward is to use the sentient falling rocks who are out for blood to make holes in the floor where there's X's. We go in and find a secret underground hot spring. We peek in the other bath and who do we see? And that, my friends, is the conclusion of Luigi's involvement. I showed you every second of his screen time within the main story. Luigi didn't want to be in this game. He's smart. While we take a rest, I noticed around here they've been giving us these ginormous stickers out of a bunch of question mark blocks. Because of this, my sticker album became a downright mess, even if I paused to organize it. Seems not even pausing can save us now. On the way out, it's another cracked rock scrap we're gonna need. Oh, it's not? Oh, it is? It is? Okay, fine. Four! Ouch! We thwarted so hard we broke the level exit. Well, just flip that over. I feel like I haven't commented on how good a level is in a while because they've just been okay. Not offensively terrible except for that first one, but also nothing stood out from the rest of the bad levels. I'm not sure if the game is slightly improving or if I'm just used to how bad it is and I'm surprised by less things. I think it's a combination of both actually, now that I say it. <laughs> Rumble Volcano! Totally not Grumble Volcano. Isn't World 5 boring for a place made of lava? Yeah, and World 5-6 is long as hell. Apparently this place is one of the reasons people dislike speedrunning this game. Besides realizing they're playing Paper Mario Sticker Star, that is. The stage is super long and it has so many hazards that stun you that this place is where good runs go to die. We jump down the hole and... Yay! Can leave well that's 
didn't go as planned. So great, we're stuck here and we risk running into her again. We fly up and have to work our way back down to Petey. We keep going up and there's a man on fire. We let him run around and he weighs down the lift, so we gotta collect skulls to weigh it down. On the second level down, there's a shop. I'll bet business is booming here. We've got a chain chomp boss fight in the next room. Like all the others, it was impervious to everything, and the fight didn't end after a few turns of surviving like last time. I left and came back to try some potential weaknesses, and then when that didn't work, I looked at a guide. I've decided I'm giving this my award for the most obtuse solution to a boss fight. The solution is the Bah Hammer. And then after using the Bah Hammer, run from the battle while it's asleep, and then hitting the stake, and then getting into another fight with it, and then wasting three turns, letting it wake up, and then having him end the battle the second time. You know, in a game where running away makes regular enemies despawn and has no effect on any other boss fight, the third floor down is quite huge. This is kind of impressive for a 3DS game. We start off with this network of chains. One of them's got Bowser tape on it, so that's logically gonna be the one with the chain chomp that we have to free. We make our way back down to where we started. The particular glowing moment of awful is the boss, Petey Piranha. He's the only major chapter boss that isn't beaten in three seconds by the thing sticker he's weak to, so it sounds like he'd be an improvement. This world gave us a Mega Flash Infinite Jump and a Mega Flash Clone Jump. Guess how they intend for you to beat him? No. Yes. I get paid to do this. Infinite Jump is my least favorite sticker. It seriously hurts my thumb to use this, and any YouTube playthrough I've watched of this section included the commentator complaining of physical pain in this boss fight, so I know I'm not alone. This game actually hurts you for playing it. Dude, my finger hurts so bad. Oh my goodness, that really does hurt a lot. We're 20 hours in and Sticker Star is still looking for new ways to be a blight on your love of this franchise. I can't believe how it just keeps finding new ways to fail as it keeps going on. Its failure managed to break the fourth wall and hurt me. Theoretically, you could win with just Thing Stickers, but the boss has no weakness and 300 HP. No other sticker's gonna be 100 damage in a single use. This is the strat. After a while, he'll make himself dizzy and we can knock him off his feet to expose his belly. With the belly button erect, he takes major damage from jumps, allowing us to finish the fight with weak attacks and claim the fifth royal sticker. That's chapter five. It's the first chapter I like zero levels in. But it also didn't have any standout horrible levels other than that first one. <laughs> The levels were just kind of there. They weren't even really that long. The only thing that really stood out was just having the lousiest boss fights yet. I suppose technically you could say this is the third best chapter in the game on the virtue of being forgettable instead of excruciating. Great level of quality being upheld from the pedigree of the Mario series. Someday I'll wake up from this nightmare and I'll get to play the four sequels to Thousand Year Door they made since I went into a coma in 2005. We're done with five out of six chapters. Only one more to go and I can't believe it. Like, really can't believe it. But we haven't even gotten to my pick for worst level in the game yet. See you next time for the finale when we play that level. The worst has yet to come.